Hello and welcome to another edition of Safe Communities. My name is Joe McDonald. I am the Sheriff of Plymouth County. And uh, today joining me as a co-host is our District Attorney and my friend Tim Cruz, uh, the Plymouth County District Attorney. We are going to be talking about something today that is uh, very important uh, given the time and uh, uh, time of year and, and some of the news stories that we've seen. It's women's self-defense. And uh, we are very uh, fortunate to have with us today uh, two gentlemen uh, representing about 50 years of experience in corrections uh, and also bringing their personal backgrounds here uh, who have put together what I think, and, and I think Tim agrees, you've had a chance to review this sure. as well, Tim, uh, what is a phenomenal uh, program of self-defense uh, for women. Uh, fast with two Ts and escape. Now, both of those things, and they'll explain it, are acronyms uh, for some of the techniques that are uh, taught within this program. And it's, it's very, very important, I think, to talk about these things now, given you know, the recent rise in uh, attacks, especially ones that are, uh, result in, in fatalities or very serious injury, very, very scary in the news. We've seen a lot of them recently, uh, which raises our level of concern uh, for the ladies you know, in our lives personally, but also uh, our acquaintances and people that we know, the good law-abiding folk in the county. Uh, with the students returning to school, uh, those provide uh, uh, areas uh, of concern. Uh, the days are getting uh, sh darker earlier. You know, we have shorter amounts of daylight. Uh, and the unfortunate reality of, of home invasions. You know, I know too often, and Tim uh, probably could speak even better to it than I could, about some of these things happening in the news that give you concern as well. Sure. I mean, it, virtually every day in the newspaper or on television, there's always a terrible event going on, whether it be a robbery of a, of a bank or a convenience store or of um, carjacking. It happens all too often. And I think, you know, we're living in a world now where a lot of individuals are out there that are doing things in perhaps broad daylight that perhaps was done at night before. And I think that's a lot of that's because of the fact of the prescription medications, the opiate issues that are out there, people that are out there that are willing to do anything to get money. And that's why it's really important, I think, for people to protect themselves or to know how to protect themselves. I mean, obviously, the best protection is always get law enforcement involved as soon as possible. But sometimes you're in situations that uh, you just can't do that, and you've got to do things to protect yourself. So that's why I'm glad that I'm be able to sit here today and listen to John yeah. and Dwayne as to what they have. Yeah, thank Thank you, Tim. And also, I think it's important to note that uh, you know we had spoken, and uh, you have a very high percentage of ladies on on staff at the DA's office. What's the percentage over there? Yeah, I would say that it's, it's close to seventy percent of uh, the staff at the Plymouth County DA's office is female, and that's why I think that you know we're going to be offering this uh, to them also to see if that's something they'd be interested in doing. And I know a lot of people really will be, especially you know we're located in downtown Brockton area, uh, and we have you know courts in Hingham, Wareham, Plymouth, and Brockton. And I think that when you sometimes you're maybe in an isolated place, whether it be not just Brockton, but in any of our court system coming out to, a, to your car at the, late at night, uh, we need to make sure that people are secure. Yeah, it's, a great, it's a great point, and I'm, I'm glad that you're going to be participating with us. Uh, I want to introduce our, uh, our panelists today, the, the gentlemen who are going to be instructing the class, and they'll tell you a little bit about their background. But first is Captain Dwayne Forts uh, from uh, the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department. And uh, Dwayne has got quite a, a background. He is a United States Marine. Uh, he also um, is the lead drill instructor at the Sheriff's Department for, uh, for our academies and uh, also goes out on loan to other Sheriff's Departments and, and does that. Uh, he's a firearms and defensive tactics instructor uh, for the Sheriff's Department, but also for the local police academy as well. And he brings a great level of, of expertise uh, in martial arts as well. The other individual that we have uh, seated to my left here uh, is Officer John Saris. Uh, John is a corrections officer and someone who has got uh, a great background as well, uh, boxing. Uh, you are a rape aggression uh, defense instructor uh, and you do that uh, on a daily basis. You also teach uh, defensive tactics with Dwayne and it's really our honor to have you guys representing us. Uh, and doing this program for, for ladies within the community. So let me turn it over uh, to one of you gentlemen to, you know, to let people know uh, Dwayne, would you like to jump in? Sure. Describe the program, what do the acronyms mean? <clears throat> the program that uh, John and I, we talked about uh, FAST and the F-A-S-T-T -T, uh, stands for Forts and Saris Tactical Training. Um, John is a, a practitioner of um, you know 
the mixed martial arts system, boxing. And I met John, I mean, we, we worked, we started together. And, um, you know, I know him to, to be a boxer. And over the years, <clears throat> he had asked me to uh, go to a, a local gym to train. And, you know, I've dabbled, you know, with smokers and stuff like that was when I was in the military. But um, when I went against John in a sparring competition, I, I realized my hand skills weren't as efficient as someone who was, you know, trained to box and so forth. And that led into the mixed martial arts um, genre of, of me getting into it with another, with another gentleman by the name of Thomas Jovi, lieutenant with us. Um, he tucked me under his wing and I ended up uh, falling in love with the uh, submission mixed martial arts, you know, um, submission, which is called um, NAGA, North American Grappling Association, and NAPAGA, which is North American Pancration uh, Grappling Association. And, you know, I was proud to say that, you know, under the training of John and, and uh, Tom Giovi, uh, I held, you know, in my division, um, the champion title since 2007 to 12. And at the 2012, I just put it to rest. And now John and I, have gotten together wow. and adapted the system into let's roll this into and we, we haven't created this is this isn't recreating the you know, uh, the wheel it's been there um, we've been through uh, seven administrations you know seven sheriffs and this is the first time that this program has been identified and recognized and offered to the public so it's a great service right John yeah John tell us a little bit about your background too and, and what uh, you know brought you to Get together with Dwayne sure. to bring this program uh, up. Basically, like, like most children, I, I started at a young age taking traditional martial arts, which eventually blossomed into um, some boxing. I did it for the physical fitness aspect and then trained uh, in, and competed as an amateur, uh, which transitioned into the mixed martial arts style, which is so common today, which is a hybrid style of martial arts. Um, you know, within the department, I was lucky enough to hook up with uh, Dwayne, who was a captain in the training department. Uh, from there, we uh, we became defense uh, tactics instructors, uh, edge weapons instructors, ground defense instructors. And between us, I think we identified a demographic uh, in need of a program, and that is women self-defense. And we're lucky enough to have the support you know, of the district attorney and, and the sheriff who are very community program oriented um, to launch this program. Yeah, no, that's great. I think it's important for people to understand that you know, even though you guys come from a corrections background, a law enforcement background, uh, and a background in, in competitive mixed martial arts, that that isn't what we're training uh, ladies to do here. Uh, what is it exactly that you're hoping to achieve? That's a good point, Sheriff. Absolutely not. Um, it, it, the, the goal that we're trying to achieve is just basic, effective moves that um, we call soft targets that we find um, are efficient. They're there, they're identifiable, but under stressful situations, um, you know, if you're not in them situations, the body seems to shut down, if you will, and um, we resort back to when we were children, the fetal position, those who don't train a lot, you know, you end up in the fetal position because in, you know, in birth, that's where we go for comfort. When we're cold, we curdle up. When you're scared, you curdle up. You take the fetal position, and, and that's not effective when you're being attacked. So we're all animal by instinct and identifying soft targets, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the throat, the toes, hands. Um, just, we're not teaching people to fight. We're not teaching women to fight. We're teaching them to strike a specific target that's available, whatever target that may be, mm. to create enough space and distance to get out of that area and make it to a safe zone. Yeah, that, and that's important to note because <clears throat> the most important thing I would think for uh, uh, anybody, uh, lady or otherwise, in that situation is to is to get themselves out of that life threatening situation. Absolutely. So what you're training is is uh, the ability for them to give themselves time to create that distance, to create that time to give them the opportunity to escape. Absolutely. Yeah. And John and I, you know, again, we we we've chatted, we bounced this back and forth, and since. This, you know, the first class is this Saturday, um, tomorrow, 9 a.m. And, um, you know, we put uh, postings up. And I've, I've, I've been asked, well, you know, is that something, you know, I look at the size of you, you know, imagine somebody like you, or, you know, uh, John Sarah's coming after us and so forth. And, you know, not every technique is 100% effective, but 
you know, as big as I am, I've stubbed my toe and, <laughs> you know, hobbled around the house like, like I was five years old again, you know? Sure. So sure. There's, there's, there's points in, 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 um, on the body, yeah. pressure points and so forth that if you, you're instructed upon it, and again, in, in a four hour block, they're not going to walk out of there and be, you know, um, you know, a, a fifth degree, sixth degree, or a black belt. Well, it's not. It's not about a belt system. It's a, a survival system. Yeah, and that's that's an interesting point and a good point. Uh, the class itself is about four hours in length. Yes. Yeah, and it's a one day class. One day class. If and uh, you know, they, you want to repeat it. You know, um, we're not. We, we wouldn't turn anybody away because the, the key mm -hmm. is repetition. How many students can you guys accommodate at, at one class? Um, tomorrow we're going to start with um, 24. Um, we want to keep the classes smaller so we can get that one-on-one -on -one attention. Uh, basically what it is, we're going to be giving people viable options for the person who is attacked. Um, the majority of the program is actually going to be on the cognitive part, how not to become a target, but for the unfortunate person who is attacked, we're going to give them viable options. Um, they're going to train in a very safe, um, effective environment where they're going to they're going to learn some pretty basic fundamental um, strikes or what have you and moves um, that may allow them to escape if they are attacked. Hmm. And where exactly are you going to be holding the class? This will be held at uh, 24 Long Pond Road at the um, Plymouth County Sheriff's Department Training Building Center, uh, Classroom uh, 5, uh, excuse me, Classroom 3. And um, it's a short, very short PowerPoint presentation. Like John said, these are just tips and awarenesses um, to be cognizant of when, when we're out and about. Um, people, you know, growing up, I know, you know, I'm 44 years old, and uh, in order for my mother to reach me or me, me to reach my mother, I had to use a neighbor's phone. You know, nowadays you have the, you know, technology, smartphones. We have so many social media distractions that people get caught up and they become tunnel vision to the, the whether it's the GPS, whether it's punching in the key code for remote access, uh, uh, keyless access into the, into the vehicles, not paying attention to their surroundings. Um, you know, with the crime rate, you know, we were just, me and John were talking about prior to the show, there's a thing called sliders. Um, and I, when I'm getting my gas, you know, at BJ's, um, I watch people pull in. I'm always watching people. And when I'm watching people for for safety issues, you know, security, you know, security, always thinking security. As we've been in this correctional facility for, you know, going on uh, 20 years, 21 years, and you, I, for me, I like to identify and see things, and um, then well, what could be done different? Sure, yeah, because I know it's not, and I know Tim uh, would probably agree with this. You know, we stop to think about these things sometimes, but not everybody views the world through a set of uh, security glasses. You know, they don't necessarily think, but I think it's important and, you know, chime in, Tim, if you... Yeah, no, I, I, th I think it's great in that, you know, you're trying to teach people, like you said, John, how not to become a target. But if by some chance you do become a target, teaching them the maneuvers or the moves that they can do to get themselves out from, away from that person, to get to that safe zone that you're talking about, Dwayne. Uh, you're not teaching somebody how to uh, be a, a, a martial arts artist that can go out there and do something or is looking for issues. How to protect yourself, how to get out of a bad situation as best as you can. And I think that's really what's important. And I think sometimes people don't even realize that you just need to get away from them for a moment. And just making noise or hitting them in a vulnerable spot is going to make that individual not want to be there anymore. They want to get to you as quickly as possible, put you down, rob you, do whatever they're going to do to you. And if you can do something to protect yourself, I think that's why this is a good program. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, you know, the bad guys pick their victims very carefully because they note what they believe to be some sort of vulnerability. Do you want to speak to that? John? Absolutely. I, I think through many years of experience and training, that's the one thing we've identified. We're able to identify the patterns of behavior of the classic predator. And they do. You, you hit the nail on the head when you said, a predator picks its prey very, very carefully. And that's why the, there's a very important part of this presentation that Dwayne and I are going to present um, on just general avoidance, general awareness to make yourself not a target, to make yourself not become the prey, because the prey is looking for easy prey. Yeah, and you know, that's true, I think, in the natural world as, you know, uh, in civilization as well, that uh, the predator looks for certain behaviors that would make you 
believe that that the victim is go is going to be an easy hit for you, and that's so you're training people to identify uh, through their observation mm -hmm. situations that could be potentially threatening and what behaviors to look for in other people. Uh, abs body language is 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 key. Um, you know, in trusting your instincts, we have a we we as humans have a false sense. Um, you know, as children growing up, you take you know I have a five year old daughter. If I were to sit her in a room and say I'll be right back, I'm going right around the corner. You know, there was I understand there's some children out there that's okay, good, and they could self entertain themselves. But for the most part, you have that that fear of not wanting to be away. Your parents being your safety zone, or your someone in your family who you're familiar with. So as we get older, we you know you have to communicate with people. Um, you, you grow up and, and, and you have to have social skills and with your social skills we lose that sense of security of that safety net of being around people that we identify and know so we allow people excuse me um, I have to talk to you for can, like Jeffrey Dahmer you know he would walk around with a cane um, appearing to be injured excuse me miss can I get you, you know I need some help or and, and he would lull people in away from safety zones mm -hmm. because we're we seem to have a a a part to be kind to people, and I'm not saying to always be rude, you always be professional and courteous, but we end up giving people the benefit of the doubt, strangers that we don't know, and you, you just don't know. So there are telltale signs that, that you know, you watch, mm -hmm. and you know, trust your instincts, trust your and instincts. And these are some of the things that you talk about in the classroom portion? Through the whole, the, the first, you know, 20 minutes of the, of the PowerPoint, um, and again, I, I kind of varied off, you know, with the sliders. You know, put in your pocket when you, when people get gas. What's been going on? Started you know down on the on the west coast, moved to the Midwest, uh, recent up in New Jersey and Connecticut, New York. Um, people who pull in to get gas, and the vehicle will pull up beside you. So as you're on the other side of your tank filling up your gas, you know most women um, will leave their uh, purses on the passenger seat. And if the doors you know the doors unlocked, they just pull right up and they slide out of the vehicle they're in test the door if the door opens and it, keeping a low profile they, they take you know the purse get back in the vehicle sometimes they don't even know what happened they get back in the vehicle the car's gone and you know they got the camera systems but obviously um, like the district attorney uh, had expressed you know people are out there just doing things you know because of you know the uh, the time and sure you know now what else uh, goes into the uh, preliminaries that you're teaching the students when when we first, you know, tomorrow when, when, the, when we open the class up with the PowerPoint, after the PowerPoint is done, we are going to go over, um, you know, basics, uh, like a basic stance, you know, talking about balance and posture. Uh, when you're going, you know, when that attack, sometimes it, it's, it's, it's quick, uh, but if you have that sense about you to, to get to a balance and a good posture stance, mm -hmm. um, then off of balance and posture come, you know, techniques. You know, talk about like someone to grab you by, you know, the hair. Um, how to, you know, quickly and effectively with a basic, mm -hmm. simple two-step move to, um, dis to to create enough space, disengage from the hair pull. As big as I am, I, it, it works, I'd say, 85, 90% of the time. Wow. It's impressive. And some of the key areas also of this program, and I, I want to note for, for the public that this program is free of charge. There is no expense uh, involved in this. All people need to do is contact us to sign up for this. But some of the things that I see here that I think bear uh, specific mention to people out there who are curious about it, things like social media distractions that you talk about. That's, that's the smartphones, that's the uh, earpieces, headsets. Talking on the phone, talking with you know your person, you know your, whoever you're traveling with, and just being so in depth, engaged in a conversation, yeah, that you don't you don't realize that your person is just sitting yeah. right and, there. And I've seen that. And I think a lot of people have seen it as well. You get people who are so uh, engrossed in a texting uh, conversation they're having with somebody, or looking at a picture or a video or something that they walk into a wall. Correct. And I think that's the kind of thing that really a predator is going to be looking for, someone who's so distracted that they have no conception of, of what's going uh, on around them. Right. In fact, you've seen some of the funny videos uh, that people put together of people walking into open manhole 
uh, construction sites and things yeah. while they're texting and yeah, you know it's it, it you know it's funny as long as it's not f happening for real but right. these are the things we have to look at also you know you guys mentioned the buddy system can you speak to the buddy system sure. John? Um, the buddy system is is uh, just a uh, put yourself in a safe environment going to and from a lot of people um, in work or their daily life um, go from point A to point B uh, a lot of times that's at night and might be in a high crime area um, we always ask that somebody go with somebody else um, that is a, a, a great deterrent for somebody, a predator out there looking to attack somebody, the buddy system. At minimum, if you can't do that, at least tell somebody where you're going to be and where you expect to be at a certain time. So if a certain time goes by, uh, that person uh, sends up a red mm -hmm. flag and that person uh, is alerted. Yeah, that's, you know, it's like uh, when I took the boating safety class years and years ago, you know, everyone said leave a float plan. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that way when you don't, uh, if you're overdue, uh, people know to, to take action. That's a good point. Now, uh, also I have noted here, avoiding making yourself a target. I think we've spoken to that, but is there anything uh, specifically that you'd like to mention? Yes. Um, you know, the, the thing, avoid making yourself a target is them, them distractions um, where you leave things that, that could be potentially intriguing to somebody who's looking for easy easy score and what I mean by that is um, you know leaving leaving car doors unlocked leaving your home uh, your houses unlocked even though it's in the middle of the day and, it, and it, it is a nice neighborhood but you know if you live where there's public road and public access the public have a right of way to use them streets and, and side streets and so forth and not everybody um, the, the crimes don't always happen in the cities and I know the district attorney could probably elaborate you know that Plymouth Ca County geographically is a big area, and there, there's a lot of, um, you know, crimes. Not necessarily that you just because you don't see Plymouth County on the news a whole bunch of times. There are, you know, in, in, in individual towns and police logs, there are crimes, minor to, to major crimes going on that don't necessarily make uh, the local news. With that, yeah, I mean, I mean, Plymouth County is roughly a half million people, and there's some great areas, obviously, here in our county, but. And it's, it's, it's rural areas, it's urban areas, it's suburban areas, and crime really has no boundaries. I mean, it, it can happen anywhere. And if somebody, and I believe that if somebody can be addicted in drugs in a rural area, just as well as in an urban area, they may be going to the urban area to get their drugs or their fixes, whatever it may be, but a lot of the events in which they use to primarily get their monies will occur nearby where they grow up, people that they know, or going out to the slider situation, or to convenience stores, or to the armed robberies. I mean, how many times do you see on television somebody just wearing a baseball hat walks into a bank? I mean, pretty brazen stuff, uh, which, which I think shows a level of desperation, which shows that it means they will come after anybody. And I think you guys are absolutely right. People are so busy on their phones or their, their ear devices as they're walking around not paying attention to anybody but their own little world that it makes it easy, and it makes them an easy a target that if somebody is walking down confidently walking down the road and is keeping their wits about them and looking what's going on I think that in conjunction with that buddy system you talk about John I think is a great thing for people to understand that you know you need to be aware of the area that you're at and you also need to be aware that it can happen anywhere just like um, you know robberies can happen anywhere domestic violence can happen anywhere it there are no boundaries it can happen to anybody's home and anybody's life we need to protect ourselves one of the things I think that's been most uh, shocking to me, and I think to many people, as you correctly point out, Tim, is the fact that these, uh, these crimes are happening n not just after dark, but in the light of day, and that these perpetrators are so brazen. You know, what do you think it is that is leading people to, to, uh, to, to throw caution to the criminals, to throw caution to the wind, and... and uh, to, perpetrate would appear to be, you know, just crazy acts. I just think it's, it's uh, I think what we see a lot of as a result of what we spoke about, prescription meds, uh, as well as regular drugs themselves, these people usually will work their way through their families. Usually they'll be staying, they'll, be, they'll lose everything themselves. They'll go back to their parents' home. They will steal from their parents. Eventually the parents will put them out in the street. They will hook up together with other individuals who are in the same situation as themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why they will go driving around aimlessly around developments, looking to see whether or not a UPS 
UPS driver drops something off there that they can steal and potentially maybe sell when somebody's out at work. Maybe they see that a motor vehicle just pulled up. It's a nice car. Maybe they see somebody run into the house. If you leave your car running, your car could get stolen. Uh, just be, I think, to be safe, you know, you turn your car off, you lock your cars, you lock your doors. I don't care where you live. It is 2013, and we live in a different world than what it was back in the 60s and 70s when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. It's a different world now. That's a great point. And I think, you know, one of the, the, the reasons that it's so important to have these classes now is because we are seeing an increased level of, of brazenness with these uh, criminals and the things that they're, that they're doing. And I think it comes, as Tim says, directly from the level of desperation that they are experiencing uh, through the drug abuse and, and uh, the other things that, are, that are, have gone wrong in their lives. And I think so, you see it at the jail all the time, Joe. I mean, yeah. you people, the people that are in there that are hooked on drugs, alcohol, some form of uh, uh, issue that they have inside the jail, I think that's, it's exploding because of that. It's being driven, it's driving yeah, that stuff. It's so true. I remember years ago when I was first asked uh, by people, you know, how many individuals are in the sheriff's custody because of drug abuse. And I used to think of that very literally, like how many people are in for possession of drugs, the distribution of drugs. But when you stop and you think about it, the answer to that is most everybody that's there has some substance abuse issue, you know, be it drugs or alcohol. So it's, it's something that's really, we need to be heightened in our awareness of this stuff. Uh, trusting your instincts is another thing that you guys had mentioned. Huge. Um, that, that, like I said, that, that sense of, of, man, something's not, it just doesn't feel right, this isn't right, and, um, but we'll, we'll stay there an extra second. We'll stay there an extra two minutes. We'll engage conversation. We'll walk around the corner away from public view because this person has the, I call it the verbal judo, mm where you get hypnotized into that false sense of security of, oh, okay, well, he doesn't look like, or she doesn't look like, you know, a, a person looking to do harm. Um, and you just, you just trust your instincts. And, mm. and, and we, we really, uh, you know, push that on the, the, the premise of, I'd rather be rude than found. Mm, I agree with Engine. that. I agree with that. And, uh, you know, also the last point that I have was getting to your safety zone. And I think the important point of that, well, I'll let you speak to that, John, if you would. Yeah, that's uh, the, what, the point of emphasis of our program. Uh, we're not teaching people to fight. We're teaching people to escape and to survive. And how do we do that? We disengage and we can get to our safety zone. We're going to get to where other people are, a well-illuminated place um, where we can be safe from that predator. Um, a lot of times, like I said, these predators, they pick their prey very, very carefully. Um, if we get to that safety zone where we're uh, well illuminated and there's a lot of people, we can make a lot of noise, there's a tension brought to this, um, then that person can be sure they'll be safe and survive that That's great. unfortunate thank you, incident. And thank you, Dwayne. Totally. Thank you, District Attorney Cruz, for uh, participating with us. And thank you, John. Uh, and thank you, everybody at home, for watching. Uh, this is a very important program. If people want to get enrolled, you can call the Sheriff's Office at 508-830-6348. Uh, or you can contact through the website Captain Forts or Officer Saris or anybody at the Sheriff's Office. If you call the main number 508-830-6200 uh, and you ask for any of us or you indicate that you want to participate in this program, uh, they will direct your call. So please call. It's a free program and I think it's going to save lives. Thank you. <laughs>